Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use the RC522 RFID module to read RFID cards and RFID tags using the STM32 microcontroller. My name is Ali and you're watching CGHQ. The circuit connections are very simple and straightforward. You just need to connect the ground in 3.3 volts on the RFID module to the ground in 3.3 volts pins of your microcontroller. And then you just need to connect the pin labeled SDA on the module to the pin labeled SDA on your microcontroller. If your microcontroller doesn't have labels, you can simply just search, search the pin out of your microcontroller on Google and you will see which pin is labeled as SDA. And then you just need to connect the MOSI and MISO pins for SPI connection on your microcontroller. These will also be labeled on your microcontroller. So without wasting your time, let's get straight to the code. To start coding, open up STM32 Cube IDE and click on create a new STM32 project. Then go to bot selector and type in the part number of the microcontroller that you're using. Click on the microcontroller, click on next. For the project name, you can just call it RFID and then click on finish. We can start from a blank canvas. So just click on pinout and select clear all pinout. And then go to system core and then here it says rcc go to high speed log and then enable the crystal ceramic resonator and then go to system and then for the debug just select the serial wire and then go to clock from configuration and then you can just make sure that your clock is running at its maximum speed for me this is going to be 84 megahertz then go back to pin out and then go to connectivity and then here where it says you add two you need to click on asynchronous and then for the parameter settings, we're just going to leave them as they are. But please take note of the baud rate of your microcontroller. And then you can just go to SPI1 and then for mode, click on full duplex master. And then for the prescaler for the baud rate, you can just change this to a value like 8. You need to connect the reset pin on the RFID module to any GPIO pin on your microcontroller. I'm going to connect mine to pin PA8. So I'm just going to come here at PA8 and then initialize it as a GPIO output. And then you also need to take note of the SDA pin that you are using. Mine is labeled as pin PB9 on my microcontroller. So I'm going to come to PB9 and initialize it as GPIO output as well. Then click on Control and S to save, generate the code and then switch to a new perspective. Before we can start coding, we're going to need the RFID library. So to get the library, just go to the second Gator HQ GitHub. The link is in the description below. When you're on the GitHub, you're going to have to download these two files, the C file and the header file. So we can just click on the header file and then come here to where it says download raw file. And then we can go back and then click on the C file as well. And then click on download the raw file. After downloading these two files, click on the header file, copy it, go back to your IDE and then come here where it says core and then here where it says include and then right click on the include folder and then paste that file that we just copied and then go back and then copy the C file go to the IDE and then here where it says SRC right click and then just paste the file here and then we can double click on the header file so here you see it says include STM32 F1 uh, we need to change this F1 to correspond with the type of microcontroller that we are using. So I'm currently using the F41RE. So I'm going to change this to F4. If you're using a different microcontroller like the blue pill, you can just leave this one as F1. When you're done, you just need to come here and then we need to make sure that our SDA and reset pins correspond to these pins here that are being defined here. This first one is going to be your SDA pin. So I'm just going to change this to GPIOB and then change it to pin 9. And then I connected my reset pin to pin PA8. So I'm going to change this to GPIO A and then change this to pin number 8. And then you can click on Control and S to save. Then we can go to the main C file and start writing our code. So here where it says user code begin includes, we're going to include the header file that we just downloaded. So just say hashtag include rc522.h. We're also going to include the string header file. So it's going to be hashtag include string.h then you need to scroll down to where it says user code begin pv we're going to initialize three variables the status variable the string variable and the number variable that is going to contain the id of the specific card and tag that we're going to be using in this video so we can just say uint 8 underscore t and then say status this time we're going to say string 
and we're going to give it a size of 16 bytes and then for the last one we're going to call this one snum and then we're going to give this one a size of 5 bytes Whenever we read something, we're going to transmit messages that show if we're reading from the card or from the blue tag. So we can just initialize these messages as characters. For this, for this message, we can just say reading from card. And then this one is going to be reading from tag. Here in user code begin to, we're going to initialize the RC522 library. Then we can scroll down to the main while loop. And then under here where it says user code begin three, we're going to write some code to scan for the card ID. So you can just say status is equals to MFRC522 underscore request. Here we're going to say PICC underscore request IDL. And then here we want it as a string. And then we're going to copy this line of code, paste it below here. Then we're going to remove this second parameter. And then we're going to change this one and change it to anti-core. After getting the ID, we're going to put it inside of our snum variable so that we can be able to see it and create some useful functions with it. So to do this, we're going to say mem cpy snum comma str and then comma five since our variable can contain a maximum of five bytes and then we're going to add a small delay of maybe 200 milliseconds and say 200 and we can then build our project to see if there are any errors that need to be corrected and after it says finish building with zero errors and zero warnings we can then click on the green debug button and then go to the debugger click on st link click on scan click on apply and then click on ok and then here under expressions you can just add the snum variable that we created so to add a variable you just click on new expression and then you type in the variable that you'd like to add and then go to live expressions and then do the same thing we can see all the five values that are going to be inside of our snum variable click on resume and then we can see that inside of our snum variable we currently have 147 32 and three zeros so we can now take our card and put it in the rfid module to see the id great after we do that we can see that our variable was able to capture these five numbers here so this is going to be the id that corresponds to our card so we can then say str at index zero is and we saw that the first value from our card's id was 131 and then at index 1, we had a value of 32. At index 3, we had a value of 17. And then finally, at index 4, we had a value of 244. So from now onwards, what we want to do is that we want to transmit our first message. So we can say how you add underscore transmit you int 8 underscore t and then an asterisk and then next to it we're going to say message one and then here for the size we're just going to say string length of message one and then for the timeout we're going to say hal underscore maximum delay if you don't know what UAD communication is, I have a video on my channel where I explain everything that is to do with UAD serial communication, whereby I teach you how to send and receive data from your microcontroller and to your PC. I've added the link to that video in the description section below. And then we can run the debugger again to scan for the ID of the blue tag. Great, when that is done, we can see that our values are going to be 19, 32, 165, 11, and 42. So we can stop the debugger, go back to the main C file, and then we can write the second if statement. And then we're going to change these values to the values we just wrote down. So the first value was 19, the second value was 32, the third value was 165, fourth value was 11, and the last value was 42. Then we need to change this to message 2 and this to message 2 as well. And then when the code has been uploaded, you can just open your serial terminal app. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Party. And then we need to check which COM port our microcontroller is connected to. So go to Device Manager. And then here where it says port, we can see that our ST link is connected to COM10. 
so we need to just change this to 10. the speed here needs to match the birth rate we had when we were initializing uart so we can just go back to uart and we see that these two values match i'm just going to increase the font a little bit so that we can be able to read it on the screen and then we can click on open when the terminal has been open we see that nothing is currently being transmitted to our serial terminal app if we put the card next to the rfid module we see that it is able to read the card and it's able to transmit uh, the serial message that it's reading from the card and then now if we take the blue tag and we put it next to the module we see that our transmission message has now changed and it says now it is reading from the tag if you found the video helpful please like share and subscribe and also if you have any feedback or any questions please let me know in the comment section below and if you'd like to help the channel grow by getting more components and equipment for more videos like this please consider checking out the paypal donations link in the description section below thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next upload